Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? I hope you are doing amazing and life is treating you wonderfully. Um, realizing that no matter where you are, everything starts with a gratitude. Um, I do this gratitude walk every single morning when I ground myself with nature. And if you have seen my um, Facebook stories, you will see how much I am connected with nature and everything. So today's um, live, we're going to dive into a topic that um, actually is a part of and celebrating October, uh, recognizing it's an awareness for this topic also. It's ADHD, which is, what is ADHD? It's an attention deficit hyperactive disorder. And frankly, nowadays, uh, living in a city as busy as Los Angeles, California, with everything that is happening, feels like everybody's got some kind of an ADHD. But outside of that, I want us to become just a little bit more cognizant when we use it in terms of uh, like a joke or if it is really a fact. And uh, as always, when I talk to my clients or even myself, when something happens, I, I ask myself, is this true? It brings us to this moment of how I call it reality. And it's a con so becoming aware of a condition when we joke about a condition and the person who's going through it, it's not a joke to them. So let's... Um, chat about that and and then I am open for any discussion if you have any thoughts ideas by all means communicate with me send me a message and I always always respond actually I like just connecting and having a dialogue about that because a few days ago I put another post and the most professional person that I admire uh, sent me and uh, responded to that with more specific ways of because that's what she specializes in and this is what I am open about so ADHD is a condition that affects actually a lot of people teens adults and it is uh, characterized by attention deficit disorder uh, and uh, it's an having lack of attention, hyperactivity, or this impulsiveness. Um, it can be very um, disheartening, and a lot of people are struggling with that. But actually what it is, it's a neurodevelopment disorder that affects the brain's ability to regulate attention. And it's not something that happens only in childhood. Sometimes many adults experience this um, and it can interfere our daily life. Um, some who are suffering with ADHD um, may be affected by hyperactivity uh, in their brain and um, struggle with inattention or a mix of both. So as many go through ADHD as uh, having the focus, uh, the uh, inability to focus, being distracted and getting angry, um, feeling restless, uh, it is a cl clinical um, condition with specific criteria and diagnosis that you may need uh, to go to a specialist. So most of us go through the symptom of forgetfulness and experiencing this distract. Um, we are distracted really fast and we have this impulsiveness or fast paced, as we call it, tech driven world. The However, 
certain lapses that happen in ADHD, uh, it doesn't mean that we have ADHD. Uh, because the key components of it is the severity of it. It is the duration of it, how long it lasts or how long you've had it and the impact that it has on your daily life. So I'm going to um, share about a client of mine in his 40s who came in feeling like he was constantly dropping the ball at work and at home. Uh, he was referred by another friend of his and he, when he came in here, he described that he couldn't stay focused uh, during meetings and he was forgetting uh, sp uh, important tasks and he was feeling irritable at home when he got home. Well, he thought, uh, because someone said, hey, you may be suffering with ADHD, and he came in saying, is this stress that I'm going through, stress and panic and anxiety, or is it really ADHD? I mentioned that if it is uh, stress, let's see how we can co uh, deal with this. We'll cope with the panic and anxiety of it and the stress factors. And if he were to continue feeling the same irritability and focus and everything, he needs to see a specialist. So during our sessions, he uncovered that his symptoms were more tied to the stress of his demanding job and the pressure of being not only the provider, but going through a divorce. And he was experiencing not only burnout at work, but feeling not good enough and the stress that it's happening and the stress and the anxiety of the divorce. So he was restless. He was becoming uh, forgettable, irritable during driving and had didn't have the core symptoms of ADHD. Within four sessions, he felt calmer. He had more control. He understood that everything that was happening in his life, they correlated and they affect. We're humans, we're not machines. So understanding that and feeling calmer and having this um, more control and learning how to manage it, he started feeling so much better. So the symptoms that he thought he had, even the environmental factors of poor sleep and irritability and the overload reduced. You see, men go through stress as much as women do. Um, unfortunately, they express it differently, maybe, sorry to say this, but road rage, they are more irritable, um, and it just, they, it hits the boiling before they express it. They think if they express emotions, it's a sign of weakness um, until it gets to a point of boiling or really anger comes off as an anger. Whereas women, we express it, communicate, talk to friends or talk in different ways and share um, tension, anxiety, stress, uh, anger in a more subtle way. And we find more ways to communicate and share our emotions that it's happening um, more than men do. So allow me to also say, women can also have hormonal changes happening with menopause that significantly affect our focus, our mood, and yes, our cognitive function, and often mimicking symptoms of ADHD, uh, which going through menopause is like that brain fog we have and forgetfulness that happens and having the difficulty to concentrate. Again, duration, uh, Sometimes we feel scattered, you know, scattered brain. 
um, but it's not really ADHD. It is because of our menopause, because of our hormonal changes we are going through. So these symptoms, um, once we did with another client managing her stress, understanding, yes, you are 54 years old. You you are hitting that menopausal fact. And if you can calm your mind and have this natural transitions and just like waves in the ocean, understanding it comes and it goes. You are going through this heat and having menopausal effects and mood changes feeling irritable, uh, it goes through it. So yes, menopause can last uh, for many years. It also goes up and down. I've talked about menopause and it's not something that you can treat it with a pill, even though many go through and doctors sometimes misdiagnose the menopausal effect and call it ADHD. So it's understanding yourself, your body, what you are going through, not only in your body, in your environment, at home, at work, everything has an effect. Stress, uh, money, finances, divorce, everything affects your energy, affects um, your body, your, your feelings. I mean, literally, uh, someone having lack of sex drive, thinking there's something wrong with me. No, it is not something wrong with you. Stop labeling yourself, but find out what is going on with you. So let's detect few symptoms of real ADHD, which is trouble focusing on tasks following through with instructions. Um, this uh, this organization, which is the frequent forgetfulness, uh, feeling restless all the time, or the difficulty staying still, and it's very much common in teens and young adults, chronic lateness, and understanding that what we call this um, difficulty managing time, it's, it's quite significant. You're always tardy, you're always late. Um, and the way I say it, what are you late for? Are you always late? Because when you say always, that means from day one that I remember I've been like this. That's different than when you say, no, I've been late only for the last seven months. When we do a timeline, understanding what's been happening in your life for the last eight months, nine months, and there is a cause and effect. So poor listening skills. You know, communication is one of the biggest things and when someone is speaking and you jump in there or you're not giving someone permission to speak their thoughts, their mind, and you jump in there and you need to say what you have in mind before you forget and it becomes unimportant what they have to say, but yours is more important, not because it is more important, is because you fear that if you don't share it at that moment, you're going to forget. And it becomes disrespectful in a sense, in a scenario of miscommunication happens when they feel you don't wanna hear them and they feel put off and yet that's not your intention, but you didn't wanna forget what you have. So it becomes my thoughts were more important, not necessarily, I want to disrespect you. So create 
here's how you can resolve this. Understand what other people go through and how they receive it. Create structure. You can develop a daily routine, use a planner, calendars, and breaking certain tasks into smaller manageable ways. Have a mindful breaks. And what does that mean? It's like short regular breaks that you do me time, right? So you can refresh your focus and become more focused on this task. I talk about embracing what is, which is right here, the reality. Don't go into the next task or jump into the next problem without solving this one. Because if you do this loop, it's going to boomerang and come back over here where it's going to take you longer to solve this one if this is not already taken care of. Set reminders. I know so many have a phone uh, that you can set reminders to give you a break, give you, um, a, remind you of appointments or remind you of deadlines and special tasks, even birthdays that you have to remember, anniversaries. Don't go home uh, not remembering your anniversary, right? Uh, sometimes a single rose can speak volumes of how important you are to me than going in at the last moment, running into a place and getting something that it's not what they want. The difference between a gift and a present. A gift, I just want to put this in. A gift is I gift you with what you want. A present is I'm presenting you with what I want. Always remember that for birthdays and anniversaries. The another uh, tool that you can have is set limiting, uh, limit your distractions. Designate a distraction free work environment. So phones, doorbells, dogs barking, that there is no distraction when you have to complete a work, especially kids. Um, I know some children say I can uh, function, I can do my homework much better when I am at a coffee shop with all the noise and everything. Or some say I can do it better with music. If it is classical, there are tones and notes of classical music that truly work with our energy and the impact that it has on our psyche, which some notes are also with the heartbeat. And those are all parts of classical notes and everything. That's why it's a healing. They play it in um, places for serenity, spa music, classical music, even at uh, surgery rooms. So it is the vibration of the tones that also relax you. And lastly, of course, prioritize self-care. Um, exercise, sleep, 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 uh, duration of sleep, go Go to bed half an hour earlier, one hour earlier. Give yourself that. And of course, nourishing. Nourishment, hydrating, a glass of happy glass and water. And those are the things. Walking on a beautiful um, path every single morning, seeing the blue skies and the birds. I do this every single day. So take time for yourself and realize when someone comes to me for stress, anxiety, um, attention deficit, uh, focusing attention, remember that hypnosis, we tap into the subconscious mind 
and those labels that you place upon yourself, the negative labels, I can't do this, I'm not good enough, uh, I, I, I don't know how to manage my anger, I am an angry, uh, those are all, they all have an underlying cause that is affecting you this way. So through hypnosis, we can tackle we can tap into the subconscious and give you a sense of calmness Tr training your brain to manage distract uh, all these distractions and reducing this impulsive actions and reactions that you have triggers and remembering sometimes triggers that used to push the button you put them out of order and definitely when you feel confident about yourself and recognize what's mm -hmm. happening in your body, if it is menopause, ah, yes, yes, that's what's happening. Now I know that I can manage it. Now I know how to uh, manage this, feel calm. And if it is hormonal imbalance, go to a specialist that specializes in that and checks my blood work my hormones and everything what do i have to do that so my brain fog goes away everything has a solution and you know what the solution is truly within you and yes um of course um everything that we do everything that I come and talk about. It's not only about the good things, about happy things, because in order for us to be happy, one, once we have solutions, oh, it's like freedom. Mm. It's the freedom to know I can. It's the knowledge when we have the solutions when we are in the knowing we can handle just about anything fear comes from the unknown really that's what fear is if I'm afraid of things that I don't know how to handle how to manage once I am in the knowing once there are solutions once once I uncover what's stressing me, what's angering me, what I have been holding on resentment or how I can focus better, then there is no fear. I can do this. I can do this. So thank you for being here, um, watching my episode on ADHD and managing uh, yourself better and realize that in life to heal anything it starts from within um, if you haven't done it already please subscribe share your thoughts share your ideas and let me know what it is that you would like me to talk about by all means if i don't know it i'll bring a specialist for you and that's what real talks are all about so subscribe to my youtube help me grow and share this message with others um, if you want to connect with me go to ihealwithin.com and let's get on a a, a a complimentary call that's all it takes and if this message resonates with you by all means or if you know someone who's going through this and they might benefit with it please share until next week, I bid you goodbye. Oh, by the way, I'm a dog lover. Today is all about dogs. Share a message about your dogs and it's about colors. So let's do this. I thank you for all that and uh, God bless you. May the universal light surround you always. Bye-bye. And if you like this, share it, subscribe, and go to YouTube, and you'll see the rest of all my podcasts.